While China unveils their sixth generation prototypes and Russia makes bold claims about their next fighter, the U.S. Navy has been quietly building something extraordinary. Right now, locked behind classified doors, two defense giants are racing to deliver a carrier-based fighter so advanced it makes the F-35 look like yesterday's technology. The F-A-20 isn't just another jet, it's the weapon that will decide who controls the world's oceans for the next 50 years, and the decision on who builds it could come any day now. The United States Navy faces a problem that keeps admirals awake at night. Our carriers, the most powerful weapons ever built, are being pushed farther from the fight. Chinese missiles can now reach out over a thousand miles, but our current fighter jets can only fly about 600 miles before they need to turn back. That's a gap our enemies are counting on. But the Navy has a plan, and it's called the F-A-20. This isn't science fiction or some distant dream. This is happening right now, and it represents the biggest leap in naval aviation since jets first landed on carrier decks. If you're as excited about American naval power as we are, type I love Navy in the comments below. Let's show some pride for the sailors and aviators who keep our oceans free. The Carrier Problem for nearly a century, the American aircraft carrier has been untouchable. These floating cities project power anywhere on Earth. But our adversaries have been studying our strengths, looking for weaknesses. And they found one, distance. China has developed what they call carrier killer missiles. The DF-26, for example, has a range exceeding 3,000 miles. These aren't just threats on paper. China has built entire military strategies around keeping American carriers at bay. They've created what military planners call an anti-access area denial zone, a bubble where our carriers can't safely operate. Here's where the math gets brutal. If a carrier has to stay 1,000 miles away to remain safe, but its fighters can only reach 600 miles, then our most powerful weapon becomes useless. The F-A-18 Super Hornet, the workhorse of our carrier fleet, has a combat radius of about 450 miles. Even with the MQ-25 Stingray tanker drone extending that range, it's still not enough. The F-35C does better, but it was never designed to be a long-range strike fighter. Our Navy needs something that can launch from a carrier operating in relative safety fly deep into enemy territory, complete its mission, and make it back home. That's exactly what the F-A-20 is being built to do. But why has this program taken so long, and what makes it different from the Air Force's new F-47? Why the Navy needs its own fighter? Some people ask why the Navy doesn't just use a carrier version of the Air Force's new F-47. After all, wouldn't that save money? The answer reveals just how different these two fighters really are. The Air Force and Navy have very different missions. The Air Force's F-47 is designed for air superiority, winning control of the skies. It's built to operate from land bases with long runways. The F-A-20, on the other hand, is a strike fighter. Its primary job is hitting targets on the ground and at sea with air combat as a secondary mission. The Navy needs a jet that can take out ships, destroy coastal defenses, and support Marines on the beach. But the bigger issue is the carrier itself. Landing a jet on a carrier at night in rough seas is one of the most demanding tasks in aviation. The aircraft needs a reinforced structure, stronger landing gear, and a tail hook that can withstand incredible forces. It needs folding wings to fit in the cramped hangar deck. It needs to handle the salt, humidity, and constant movement of life at sea. The F-35 program proves this point perfectly. The Navy's F-35C and the Air Force's F-35A look similar, but they only share about 20% of their parts. The Navy version is significantly different. 
That's why the F-A-20 can't just be a modified F-47. It needs to be designed from the ground up as a carrier aircraft. And there's another critical difference. The Navy's focus isn't just on stealth and speed, it's on range. The F-A-20 will have 25% more range than current fighters. That translates to roughly 1,000 miles of combat radius, possibly more with tanker support. Suddenly, those Chinese missile zones don't look so impenetrable anymore. Before we dive deeper into the companies competing for this contract and what this fighter will actually do, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but it makes a huge difference to us. Now, let's talk about the competition that's heating up right now. The competition. Three companies originally competed for the F-A-20 contract, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin. But in March 2025, Lockheed Martin was eliminated. Their proposal didn't meet the Navy's criteria. That left two giants battling for what could be the most important fighter contract of the 21st century. Boeing has deep experience with carrier aircraft. They built the F-A-18 Super Hornet, the jet, the F-A-20 will replace. They know carriers inside and out. Earlier this year, Boeing won the Air Force's F-47 contract, a massive victory that some thought would hurt their chances with the Navy. After all, could Boeing handle two sixth-generation fighter programs simultaneously? Boeing's CEO Steve Parker says yes. He's made it clear that Boeing is ready to build both jets. Their recent concept art for the F-A-20 shows a tailless, twin-engine stealth fighter with some similarities to the F-47, but adapted for carrier operations. Boeing knows this program could define their fighter division for decades. Then there's Northrop Grumman. This company has a special expertise that Boeing lacks, flying wing designs and advanced stealth. Northrop built the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber and is now building its replacement, the B-21 Raider. Their concept art for the F-A-20 shows a design that looks like a descendant of their YF-23 Black Widow, the fighter that lost to the F-22 back in the 1990s. Many experts thought the YF-23 was actually stealthier than the F-22, and Northrop has spent decades refining those technologies. For Northrop Grumman, the F-A-20 represents something personal. They haven't built a carrier fighter since the legendary F-14 Tomcat. Winning this contract would bring them back to naval aviation in a major way. Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth approved the program to move forward with source selection in October 2025. The announcement could come any week now. Whoever wins will be building the backbone of America's naval air power for the next 50 years. The stakes couldn't be higher. What makes it sixth generation? So what exactly makes the F-A-20 a sixth generation fighter? It's not just about being newer or faster. Sixth generation capabilities represent a fundamental shift in how air combat works. First, there's stealth. But we're not talking about the stealth of the F-22 or F-35. The F-A-20 will feature what's called all aspect stealth making it nearly invisible to radar from every angle, not just from the front. It will use advanced materials and coatings that absorb radar waves across multiple frequencies. Even low-frequency radars that can sometimes detect current stealth jets will struggle to find it. Second, there's range. We've mentioned this, but it bears repeating. The F-A-20 will fly roughly 25% farther than the Super Hornet. With aerial refueling from the new MQ-25 Stingray drone, its effective range becomes even more impressive. This extended reach changes the entire calculus of carrier operations. Suddenly, a carrier battle group's area of influence jumps from 8 million square miles to over 11 million square miles. That's an area larger than North America. Third, there's networking and sensor fusion. The F-A-20 will be a flying supercomputer. It will connect with satellites, other aircraft, ships, submarines, and ground forces in real time. 
It will see targets hundreds of miles away and share that information instantly across the entire fleet. It won't just be a fighter, it will be a quarterback for the entire battle space. Fourth, and this is crucial, it will command drones. The F-A-20 will control multiple unmanned aircraft, using them as loyal wingmen. These drones can fly ahead into dangerous areas, carry extra weapons, or provide additional sensor coverage. The pilot becomes a battle manager, orchestrating a team of aircraft rather than flying alone. This is called manned-unmanned teaming, and it's a game changer. The Navy is also considering directed energy weapons, lasers that can shoot down incoming missiles or drones. While current laser technology isn't powerful enough for fighters yet, the F-A-20 is being designed with the electrical power and cooling capacity to add these weapons when the technology matures. And finally, there's adaptability. Unlike previous fighters that were locked into their original design, the F-A-20 will use open architecture systems. That means new sensors, weapons, and computers can be added throughout its service life without major redesigns. It's being built to evolve. The Challenges and Controversies Despite its promise, the F-A-20 program has faced serious challenges. The biggest one is money. Sixth-generation fighters are expensive, potentially more expensive than anything we've built before. Some in Congress have questioned whether America needs two advanced fighters, especially with budget pressures mounting. Earlier this year, there were real fears the program might be canceled. The Pentagon initially requested only $74 million for the F-A-20 in the 2026 budget, barely enough to keep the lights on. Meanwhile, the Air Force's F-47 got $3.5 billion. Many saw this as a death sentence for the Navy's fighter, but Congress pushed back hard. Lawmakers, particularly those who understand naval power, recognize that the F-A-20 isn't optional, it's essential. They added $750 million to accelerate development, and the Navy included another $1.4 billion in its unfunded priorities list. The message was clear. This program matters. There's also the industrial base question. Can America's defense industry handle two sixth-generation programs at once? Boeing is already stretched building the F-47. Northrop Grumman is dealing with cost overruns on the Sentinel nuclear missile program. Some worried that neither company could deliver the F-A-20 on time. The Navy itself has had to make tough choices. Secretary of the Navy John Phelan put the program on hold in June 2025, citing concerns about contractor performance and the need to rethink the entire carrier air wing. But by October, Defense Secretary Hegseth approved moving forward. The program survived its darkest moment. Critics also point to China's rapid progress. China is already testing two sixth-generation prototypes, the J-36 and possibly the J-50. One of these may be designed for their carriers. They're not waiting around. If the F-A-20 gets delayed too long, we could find ourselves playing catch-up in a race we used to lead. But there's good news. The Navy has learned hard lessons from past programs. Instead of trying to develop breakthrough technologies while building the aircraft, a mistake that plagued the F-35, the F-A-20 is using mature technologies wherever possible. The Navy is following what's called a risk reduction approach. They're testing concepts, building demonstrators, and solving problems before committing to full production. This should help avoid the cost overruns and delays that have haunted previous programs. What this means for America's Navy. The F-A-20 represents more than just a new airplane. It represents America's commitment to maintaining the most powerful Navy the world has ever seen. Our carriers aren't going anywhere, but they need the right aircraft to remain effective. Think about what's at stake. 70% of Earth's surface is water. Most of the world's population lives within 100 miles of a coast. Control of the seas means control of global trade, the ability to protect allies, and the power to respond to crises anywhere on the planet. 
American carriers have guaranteed freedom of navigation and deterred aggression for generations. The F-A-20 ensures that mission continues. With its extended range, advanced stealth, and ability to control drone swarms, it transforms what a carrier can do. It pushes the threat envelope back where it belongs. It gives American commanders options they don't have today. For the sailors and aviators who will fly and maintain these aircraft, the F-A-20 represents a vote of confidence. It says that America values their service enough to give them the best tools possible. It says we're not conceding the future to anyone. The first F-A-20 jets should enter service in the early 2030s. They'll fly alongside F-35Cs, creating the most capable carrier air wing in history. As Super Hornets retire through the 2030s and 2040s, the F-A-20 will gradually take their place. By mid-century, these fighters will be protecting the grandchildren of today's sailors. Conclusion The F-A-20 isn't just another program in the Pentagon budget. It's the aircraft that will determine whether American carriers remain relevant in an increasingly dangerous world. With Boeing and Northrop Grumman both ready to build it, and Congress now backing the program with serious funding, the question isn't if the F-A-20 will happen. It's which company will build it and how soon it reaches the fleet. Our Navy deserves nothing less than the best, and that's exactly what the F-A-20 promises to deliver. If you found this video informative, hit that like button and subscribe for more military content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.